Hey there, Jim Hiles from First Capital, Gold Plan 101, Wealth Wednesday. Here we go. We, I got a question from somebody. What is a puts? What, what's a calls? By the way, there's a there's a huge market out here. These are derivatives. In other words, you, you're going to buy. I'm going to buy a put on Apple or a call on Apple. Uh, that's great. You really aren't owning Apple or buying Apple. You're you're buying an option. That's called a derivative. You're not buying the real thing. You're buying something that's a derivative of it. Uh, on a put side, basically a put is an option, it's, a, it's agreement, it's a contract that gives the owner the right, not the obligation, but the right to sell a certain amount of the underlying asset at a set price within a specific time. So the buyer of a put says, hey, I think this will pick on Apple, why not, right? Uh, we think Apple's going to go down and therefore, rather than going down uh, in the price with the stock, we're going to buy a put option, which allows us to protect or create value to offset the decline in Apple stock. And again, all these are set uh, by contract. There is a time period which can work to your disadvantage. The, the, the further away it is, generally the better it is. The closer it gets, uh, it depends if it's you know in the money or out of the money, which is profitable or not on the trade. But uh, there are a lot of factors which go into valuing what an option is worth. But you can buy and or sell the option without having to exercise the option. So there's a market for options um, underway all the time. And for someone buying a put, uh, you can, if an Apple stock goes down, you may sell your put option to somebody else. You might make a couple bucks on that by doing so. So it all depends on the price movement of the underlying stock that it's a derivative of. But this one basically says, you can, you can stop out your loss. That's the name of, of a put option. Your put uh, is basically saying, I'm going to put the stock back to you at this price. So if Apple goes from, I don't know, 125, you buy a put option at 100, and the stock goes to 50, just to pick a number, then the value for you is, is going to be stopped out. It's, you, the value is not going to go to 50 for you because you're going to get an offsetting value with, it, with the value of that option. You can exercise that option and actually get the stock back at that higher price. So that's a way of protecting puts versus calls. You can look at a put in contrast with the call. It's the inverse. Basically, it gives the holder the opportunity to buy uh, at a price on or before expiration, generally uh, above. If you think the value of the underlying asset is going to go up, you can buy an option, a call option on Apple. We'll use Apple. You say Apple's going to 200. Is it 125, for example? Instead of shelling out all the money to buy $125 for a share, you could buy call options on Apple, which basically gives you this contractual right to exercise. So if stock goes up on Apple, you'll make money on the value of those calls. And again, you can sell that in the market, or you can, if, if the exercise price is is reached, which is every one of these things has a time period and an exercise price, then you have then the capability to exercise and get that stock. So that's essentially how they work. Um, I, there's a lot to know about options. It's not an easy one to do in a, in a three minute segment, but that's generally how we're looking at options in today's marketplace. You will hear all kinds of combinations in the options trading markets of, of how people use you know, puts and calls together, how to protect stock positions with collars, how to do straddles and all these fun names that these guys can think of. Um, and there is money to be made. However, most of the investors we have are primarily going to stay relatively conservative, meaning we're either going to try to make money on a call or we're going to try to play defense with a put. So um, how expensive they are depends on the market and the volatility or the risk that's perceived both now and in the future. So you can get a sense for how the quote unquote market feels about a stock or the stock market in general for what the options prices are, are doing. In other words, if option prices are expensive for puts, for example, the reason the price is up on those supply and demand, people are saying, yeah, a little bit, <laughs> I don't know, we're going down here and they're gonna buy a put. And, but you have to pay up for that insurance against a decline. So um, in periods uh, where people are complacent and that low risk, you know, the value of, the stock of that same put option would probably decline in price. And, you know, you might argue that's the time to buy it. But in that case, you probably buy it for less than you did in a volatile market 
but it still doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go in your favor. So those are the things that that we continually look at for the option markets. Hope that was helpful. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Jim, hands off for now.